Hello, this is Reverend James Hutchings, and this is my reflection for Sunday the 6th of March, the first Sunday in Lent. This year in Lent, we have a terrible coincidence with the uh, appalling warfare in Ukraine. And it's with that in mind that we uh, look at our first reading, uh, our main reading this Sunday, which is about when Jesus is tempted in the wilderness by the devil. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Well, in this story, we uh, see how Jesus is tempted in some quite particular ways and ones in which I think we can all relate. First of all, he is tempted to misuse power, the power that he does have when he is physically weak, something that is so easy for us to do to exploit what power we have uh, when we are in desperate material or physical need. The next temptation is one about power and about success must surely have been so tempting for Jesus to want to show that he was succeeding in the mission that he had been given by God the Father, just as it is so tempting for you and me to want to be seen to be successful and to feel that we're being successful in what we do. And then the third one strikes me as being almost more a question of uh, Jesus being riled by the devil as much as being tempted. He is... Uh, uh, um, um, He's, he's, he's challenging him uh, to show his authority uh, and that must have must have been so uh, indeed so tempting for Jesus to show who he truly was and yet he resists that temptation as well and so these are all forms of temptation of challenge of test that apply to each and every one of us in our contexts uh, and provides rich material for us to dwell on at this most challenging of times, because we we see in Ukraine now the outworking of the abuse and misuse of power which, to which Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness. It is the most contemporary of stories in that sense. Uh, however, we do also see in Ukraine the best of humanity uh, in the courage of the Ukrainian people and of their determination to stand up for freedom and for liberty, for community, for family, uh, to put themselves second and others first. Uh, and equally, we've also seen uh, that best of humanity in the support being shown from outside Ukraine now in the welcome that countries, particularly on the neighbouring countries, are giving uh, to refugees from Ukraine and the outpouring of generosity um, that's happening in our own community uh, and across our country in terms of the giving of donations, the sending out of donations, uh, the, uh, the response to the DEC appeal for Ukraine. So in the face of such terrible uh, things in Ukraine, we can feel hopeless, but we don't need to be hopeless and inactive. We can be active by living out lives that resist the temptations that uh, were presented to Jesus in that uh, uh, in the wilderness by the devil and we can in our own lives in our small ways serve the neighbour around us 
so that we stand up for all of those best qualities of human nature. Uh, this, so this Sunday, uh, I'm sure in a much more eloquent way, we have a guest preacher uh, on speaking on this passage. That's Dr. Paula Gooder. Uh, Paula is a licensed lay minister and is Chancellor of St. Paul's Cathedral, who is the patron of our church here at St. Mary's. And um, she will be preaching and also um, uh, taking questions and leading a discussion after the service. Uh, Paula is one of our leading biblical scholars, uh, author of numerous books. And so this is a great opportunity to come and uh, ask her questions, not only about this Sunday's Gospel reading, but about other tricky biblical questions you may have for her. Do come and pose those to her this Sunday. Uh, we, our Sunday club will be meeting again this uh, at the service at 10 o'clock. Uh, at 8 o'clock we have uh, our service of Holy Communion uh, uh, led by Bishop Richard Harris. Afterwards there will be our parish breakfast uh, which will be in the Melville room. Do come along either if you are coming to the 8 o'clock service uh, or if you're coming to the 10 o'clock service and come a little bit early to come and join together at that time of fellowship. That's um, after the service about 9 o'clock. And then uh, at 6 o'clock we have our service of said even song which Geoffrey Barnett will be leading. Of course this weekend it sees the start of the Barnes Music Festival uh, and as we again look at uh, the uh, uh, all that is happening in U Ukraine, standing up for the best of civilization, uh, exemplified by the music that, and the performances we're going to hear over the next two weeks, is a sign of hope uh, in the darkness. And so I do urge you to come along to as many of the performances as you can over this coming week, this 10th anniversary of the Barnes Music Festival. Uh, and uh, uh, do please have a look at our weekly news as usual, which you'll, you'll can find on the website uh, if you don't get it directly, uh, which will uh, has lots of information about the different Lent activities that we have coming up here and the ways in which you can uh, mark Lent in terms of your uh, uh, life of um, uh, giving to others, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, perhaps giving up some uh, material things um, as a form of discipline this Lent, and of and of uh, growing closer to God in prayer. And as part of that, our Lent group continues. Um, had a really good start last Wednesday, and will continue this Wednesday at two thirty uh, in the church. So I'm just going to conclude now with the words of the alternative collect for this Sunday, which is uh, not only a prayer for ourselves, but also a prayer for our world in the face of all that is happening at the moment. Heavenly Father, your son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer, that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.